Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for joining Ryan's Times Thoughts, my everyday guy, everyday thoughts, my podcast. I welcome you, new listeners, some people that listened to me before. Thank you. Thank you for coming and spending some time with me. We're going to try to cut this podcast, maybe only 10, 15 minutes max. Try to catch some important things. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to talk to some people from South Dakota. I got introduced by friends and also my brother on this subject was happy to call it because his daughter is entering high school. So this topic is really the understanding of some tips um, of going to college, some tips of parents and all that, maybe exploring the college atmosphere, slowly introduce if you're a freshman, sophomore, give you some things. But thank you so much for tuning in. But don't forget, you could catch me on my Twitter account, my Instagram, and of course my YouTube. You could catch me on that. I'll make sure you say lights and um, subscribe. I promise I will update more videos, cool videos of all sorts of things because I'm doing RV living. I get the opportunity to share experience and get to meet different people from all different areas in the United States. And also, I met some people from Sweden. So it's kind of nice. I have that opportunity plateau to kind of bounce things off, their opinion, their thoughts. But we're going to talk about high school. Graduate from high school and even while you're in high school. But before, I always say, before we get into the subject, all that, we always should shake a couple of 10 minutes and just get the groove in. Yeah, that's it. We got our group in. We're going to be talking about high school. Um, experience of some fun facts that some of you guys don't know. I'll try to cut it shorter because that is a big subject. You can't talk enough about it. But let's just talk about the little thing. Hey, we talked about biggest thing, um, colleges. Um, how many college? Um, everybody across the world think about colleges. They do. You have 60 per, in every race. You have 62% of uh, whites think about, 62.9 think about colleges. You have Asian culture think, think about around 83.2%. You have Hispanics think about 56.2%. And you have blacks that think about it by 56%, 56.6%. So we kind of get that everybody, there's not a different culture. Everybody is thinking about colleges. You know, economics comes in play, so that's the big issue maybe that comes in of all race. Economics comes in play, how you don't pay for the college and so forth. So we got that, right? We kind of understand that. Um, I mean, you think about the percentage of U.S. high school graduates who are attending college and looking for work and already employed was 33% in 2020. So graduate from high school, attending college, it turns out to be around 33%. And it's kind of fascinating if you think about it. I'm from California, so I don't talk about California because I don't think I don't know all the great facts of different states in a sense, unless I talk to people and do research. But I just did a little fun facts about California. Among California, you, uh, pub, uh, people, public graduates, 63% are enrolled in uh, following high school graduation, 63%. The fascinating thing is only 23 26% of them is actually in a four-year college. So they're attending college, maybe vocational schools, trade schools, and so forth, but actually going, attending a university on uh, 26%. I thought that was fascinating. And you know they have a lot, you would think the um, United States have a lot of colleges. They're really from small to big. You're looking around 5,300 colleges and university. These are colleges, of course, range from beauty schools, private Ivy schools, research, Harvard, and stuff like that. As um, far as trades, um, there's a lot of trade schools out there. You're looking at there's around 6,769 trade schools out there in the U.S. Awesome. I mean, decline since 20, um, 2022, since 21, around um, 1%. But still, a lot of people go to trade schools. Just, it's out there. Trades are there. I mean, you think about the labor um, participation a rate is around 37.9 for females, 27.7 um, for males. Thought that was fascinating. So we got 
already know all all races, college enrollments rates for by ethics it's around 62% to 62.9%. You're looking at 82.2% Asian, Hispanic, Blacks, 56.2 to 56.6. I got it. We all think about that. Um, we all understand the concerns when you talk to high school students, parents, and so forth. The biggest concern is the cost of the school um, for first time going loans and so forth. And it's fascinating that a lot of people don't want loans. And they always say, hey, I want to go to school for your college, but they don't want any loans. And I go like, wow, that's that's pretty fascinating. That would be great if that's possible. But you... You know, you think about if that's possible, they, I hear people, what's the difference? You know, I want to go to private school, not for, for profit. But really, both of them, it's not that much difference. It's really clear. Private schools, pro, um, for profit schools, not that much difference. You've got um, state universities, um, you're looking at anywhere from $10,230 to 26290 for everyone. You know, and that's also comes in um, state res resident students. Some people charge more out of state, but that's typically for everything around that's a factor. Um, compare people I'll say to private schools, non private schools, um, they're looking at around $35,830. So maybe a $10,000 difference. But remember, private schools depends what um, schools you will. If you do research, when they say pri um, for profit schools, um, um, it it it's pretty interesting. Uh, um, it's just fascinating, honestly. So you remember for at private school um, at private schools, non profit schools. I mean, looking at a dramatic change, but remember, it depends what college you're going to, so forth. We got that. Cost of colleges, no doubt about it, is expensive. And um, good for you guys if you have, um, um, you thought ahead and have um, funding in place and so forth. Awesome. Congratulations. But, you know, I always tell people, yeah, I talked to a couple of seniors and I said, man, when do college, when, um, if you ever would you ever go to a, a community college compared to a university and you hear them say um, never thought about it right maybe the um, the factor is colleges um, high schools they focus so much on universities that they don't realize they're putting damage on people that can't afford um, university so they also think a community college is um, not good because we focus so much on a four-year college, but we already did the stats. Remember, we did the stats on me actually go to a four-year college. There, it, it's it's if we really focus on those stats a little, you would think, hey, maybe we're shift and we should talk about um, four-year, two-year colleges, trade schools as more a little more in the curriculum thought process because once again you're looking at only 33% of the people that graduated in 2020 actually went to a, a college. But remember that percentage dropped down if we went to California, that actually 20 cents actually went to a true four-year college. So it'd be interesting if the whole, um, the whole scheme of things. So we got that. So I think that's the one thing that we kind of forget um, in high schools. But I talked to a great eighth um, great teacher who's from South Dakota and she actually starts talking about the budgets, interest rates and starts getting her class classes understand that in eighth grade. Can you imagine if they do that every year all the way to their senior year, enhance, use Excel spreadsheets, all that, how much more the students will be prepared for um, college and even life. And also I think that would be a great talking point for the parents to actually now understand we want to support you for college but you understand how much the cost of the college and you just talk about that your senior year that's not fair for the kids it's not even fair for you honestly so i always tell people freshman year i'd say don't talk about colleges because that's not the time to do it remember that's when they first start going and understand high school starting to hear the sounds <laughs> Always be more filled. 
the students are more active, people are thinking about, seniors are thinking about colleges. Don't you remember when you were a freshman how overwhelming that was? Um, if you play sports, now you have people just as almost good as you as athletes, and now you're competing with that. So is that fair to put not only a freshman talk about getting used to college, talk about college, and then on top of that, getting used to high school? That's why high schools don't really introduce colleges till what? Um, 10th grade when they start introducing. There's a reason for that. So I really think high school students should be their freshman year. They should start getting used to it, getting, building friends, trying to make it good times, make high school experience their freshman year the most exciting time and supporting them and so forth because that will translate the next three years their career path. Um, so I think that's what we should really focus on if you want to introduce anything about college. Do those colleges that um, don't do the, they let you take classes, but they don't count for your um, degree yet. So now you could like take a whole bunch of them and it's less, it's only four and a half weeks instead of 15 weeks a normal semester because if you got credit, you have to be in school for 15 weeks. And remember college homework is around 20 hours a week uh, per class. So why not you inter inter um, introduce them into college, maybe some like my school, Camden Bar University, they have a pre-admission thing for four and a half weeks. You could take any classes for free, you just buy the supplies. You could introduce to our art center, illustration, and you get the foundation. And then if you came to their school, great, if not, but the best thing is it gives them opportunity. And I think anybody should have the opportunity to understand how college is. I mean, that's the, the key to everything. Remember, college is, if you don't talk about it, it's not like all of a sudden out of the blue, you actually win a, a prize. Come on, is it that easy to win something? No. Hey, go hit room um, curtain number three. You get free college. Dude, it's not that easy. So I think the, the freshman year, that's that the kids to get used to college. Hopefully the teachers are talking about budgets. I wish that more schools um, talk about budgeting, interest rates and all that from the freshman, sophomore, senior year. Um, it made them a better student, better person in life and less failures. So I really think about that. I think that's the thing. So I know we talked a little, it's time to like maybe clear um, the mind again. And that's just, um, go back into it for a couple more minutes, but let's just refresh. So let's just continue. I promise to be another five minutes and then we're done. It will be a little faster now. But let's just go to the ins and outs. Let's talk about one thing, like pre-college classes, study that, do those kind of things. But I just want to let everybody know you, had, you do have other opportunities. I mean, the five most demanding jobs right now out there, only one of them requires a high school diploma. I mean, a, a, a degree. Um, registered nurses is number one. Number one um, demanding job out there that people are seeking. Nationwide, the average salary is around $68,020. Um, jobs per um, million person, one million people, 15,663 jobs available out there. Um, the things that you need, um, if you don't be a nurse, just remember the prime, it's like assistant, I, um, ICUs, hospitals, and stuff like that, right? And what you need is, of course, a bachelor degree and a nursing license, a state nursing license. So number one, that's the number one demanded job out there. Number two, surprisingly, but it's not, truck drivers. Hey, kind of made sense. Get all our goods. We're finding how diesel prices is reflecting on our uh, cost of what we buy, um, inflation on that. So big deal. But truck drivers, we can live without them. Um, you, main thing is you have to have a clean driver's license um, and so forth. But And a high school diploma or GD, right? So if you're not thinking about going to college, maybe look at a trade like that. The average is 60000 
uh, $911 per year, for, per 1 million, it's 14,997 people that they're looking at, job opportunity. Number three, it's shift leader. It's not like McDonald's, Burger King, in and out is shift leaders are more like um, um, supervisor of operation of a business uh, while working alongside employees, right? It also, um, only thing you need is really experience, probably to move up in that position, right? Um, and only need a high school diploma or GED for the average um, um, income, $51,643 per one million person is around $9,914. Not bad, number three. Number four, delivery drivers. We see that all the time. I mean, Amazon, um, UPS. I love those guys. Every time I see them, they drink a lot of water. So I try to give them, if you guys do that, be nice to your UPS, and Amazon, FedEx, and maybe get those package of Gatorade, um, um, Kool-Aid, so they could put in their drink. They will appreciate it so much. It's amazing when you just do that little thing that costs you less than a dime and how much they light up when like, you care. So I think all right, that's important. Drivers, number four, the average is $50,858 nationwide. You look at job opportunity, one million person. There's 800 and, I mean 8,653 um, opportunities. Um, primary duty is, of course, delivering, transportation, placing things. Um, and the only thing you need is a high school diploma or GED. Number five is operation, uh, own your own um, um, truck a uh, delivery so owner operation driver right you own your own uh, equipment all you need is make sure you have a truck that you own the maintenance and so forth right all you need is high school diploma or GD you also probably have to have a clean driver's license a truck license but the opportunity is around one hundred and eighty four thousand four hundred thirty six dollars and that one per one million person six thousand seventy two dollars so pretty simple so what I, what I always tell people, there's opportunities for everything. To have your kid do pre-college, high school students, you talk to them, and seniors from freshmen, one from my family from South Dakota, one of the kids wants to be a lawyer, the other one wants to be a surgeon, small town they live in, they think about high school, first time they start getting like really introducing, sophomore year, junior year, I asked both California and Somebody from um, South Dakota and other places, the junior is the most pressure for high school students. Overwhelming. Um, you, it's just overwhelming. So you hear that. And then also um, they find out that it's just interesting um, how they got introduced in it and also their knowledge of it. So I always tell parents the most important thing you could do is start having them, if you're wondering about the cost, if you can afford it, why not introduce them to the budget of the house, show them how you calculate how much goes out of the house, maybe talk about the interest rate. There's one um, lovely lady from South Dakota, she's an eighth grade teacher, and she brings that to her class to let them know, introduce percentage, um, interest rates, and so forth. I think every school should do that. In the past, they did. Why are you taking that away? Because that's just life skills to make somebody better. So I hope you guys really have fun um, tuning into Rhymes Times about little tidbits of fun facts of how high school, um, the cost of colleges, the percentage of people going to college. You know, so really, school is out about that. Do your research. Understand what, you're, um, what you need to um, make your kids. Think about the... Schools go up 3 to 5% every year, universities. So be prepared for that. It's really hard to get a full scholarship. If you do, think about that. Each, each year, you have to come out with that same amount of money. To four classes at some schools, um, some of their units cost $3,216. You times it by four because you're a full-time student. One semester without anything, books, tuition, books, housing, could be around $12,864 per year. Remember how many semesters? There's two for sure, fall and spring. You might want to go spring, um, summer. So you imagine your budget. 
You could imagine also in the old days, you could finish school, a four year call, a bachelor degree in four years. Not like that anymore because a lot of times you need like 44 classes. You do the think about that, you spread out through the years. That's a lot. You have to, if you want to short, you're taking a lot of classes. So I hope this helps you guys. I want to thank you for tuning into Rhymes Times um, Thoughts. Um, an everyday guy, everyday thoughts. And I just want to thank you for tuning in. I hope that helps you. The quick fats. I will podcast from other fun things. I might do a food segment of one of my local food places so we could go out and see what's the local in Manteca, California. The Great Wolf on resorts. You could go. Maybe stay in the RV part. And maybe I could tell you some great places to eat over in Manteca. But other than that, that's where I'm staying at right now. Who knows where I would go from this point on. I'm a traveling um, I live in my RV, me and my wife full time, and plus I work remote. So what opportunity I have to come visit, answer some of your guys' questions. But thank you for tuning in to Rhymes Times. Enjoy.